Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Share It. My name is Genevieve. And my name is Chioma. Welcome to the studio again. How are you, Chioma? I'm grand. How are you? I'm doing very well by the grace of God. Um, so today we have a very special guest. It's very, very exciting. Um, we have got... Amir. Amir. Woo! Welcome, welcome to the studio. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself, please? My name's Amir, 26 years old, based in London. Come to this church as often as I can. It's a beautiful church, surrounded by beautiful people. And I'm here to, you know, understand more about Christ. And okay, beautiful. In case you're wondering what church it is, it's a church called Beauty Behind Gospel, which we are the sister, I don't know, sister page of, I guess. <clears throat> and I guess we all found out that you, you were coming to the church because you're watching us online. So how did you find us? How did you find the church by the basically and why did you continue to watch us so I have, a, I have a very good friend that comes to the church oh, who? full discretion <laughs> uh, i'll say the name oh. but um yeah i knew i've known her for eight years so i've known my friend for eight years and i always used to debate with her about you know christianity and things like that but this is her church she sent me a link to the service and minister michael was preaching so i tuned in he had a few one-two jokes, and I, you know, thought I could relate. <laughs> yeah. He was young, because I thought I need to tune in some more. And then, you know, Rev Bruno was speaking, and it really, like, connected with me. So then from then, I thought, you know, let me just try to be consistent and watch online as much as I can and try to come as much as I can as well. So before you, because you mentioned that you used to debate with your friend, and um, obviously I'm... Obviously, I'm assuming um, because you said that Minister Michael had a few jokes and he was young. So that I'm assuming that was a surprise for you. So what was your perspective of Christians, Christianity, church before you actually got into it? So in terms of church, I don't feel like I had any perspective of what the church would have been like. I grew up in a Catholic school. Mm. So I guess in terms of church services, they were very boring. Mm -hmm. It was the same old thing. I used to look forward to the hymns. Yeah. Because I used to sing and not very mm. well, but you know, it was time that I could make a, a little, hold a little have tune. A, have a battle with my friends who okay. so could sing the best. But, <laughs> um, so for me, it was just just boring. I used to like fall, fall asleep and things like that. Mm. And I guess I wasn't understanding what the message was because um, it just repeated over and over again. So I think, but my perspective on like church and a Christian church is normally like, when I'm walking on the street and I see evangelists and stuff like that, it's like, I'll be that type of person that's on my phone and walk straight past them because <laughs> mm. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah, but yeah. Like now, understanding as I've got older, I guess I'm more open. I was more open to, I guess, stopping by, seeing what people are saying and mm. just trying to educate myself more on Christianity. And he just had a, a good way of, I guess, introducing to me what church could be like. And I know not all churches are like this as well. Mm. So... Yeah. It's okay. Not, yeah. So you came from like a hin Hindu. Yeah. So I came from a yeah. like a Hindu background. Um, like most of my family's Hindu, and then I went to a Catholic school, and I think that's where things changed. Because when I was around Hindu family, I was living with my dad, but when I started living with my mum, that's when I think I was more in a Catholic school. I wasn't really around family as much. Um, so that's where you know I kind of got to know a bit more about God that wasn't, you know, the Hindu gods and understanding a bit more about Jesus and I guess the story of the gospel and things like that. So that kind of led me in a um, different direction, but I wouldn't mm. say I was ever Hindu. Mm. I would say I was like, grew up Hindu, then I was like spiritual, I guess the new age mm. type of thing that we see. And then, yeah. Yeah. Um, so wow. sorry so before we get into your testimony as a christian who has um family members um are you close with your family i would say yes or no okay yeah. so there's some people that you're close with some people you're not all yeah. okay so as um a, a christian who is surrounded by people who are hindu and obviously you have to love them and because they're family what's it like for you like what's the experience like do you feel like you're able to be free in your faith or do you feel like you're constantly having to explain yourself uh, i'll say i can be free in myself because i think as a christian you have to be 
old. Yeah. And I'll try and practice that. Maybe if I was younger, I would have shied away mm. from that. But I'm a, I'm a big man now. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, um, i got to speak um, and represent my faith to the best that I can. My family, I would say they understand it. They don't, they don't really question me, if I'm being honest with you. Mm-hmm. Maybe in other households, it would have been it would have been different. Yeah. But I think there's a big distinction between like culture and religion. And because I grew up, in, I'm Indian. There's a overlap between culture and religion, and mm. that's when it gets hard to kind of separate the two. Mm. But yeah, I can't. Like, it hasn't been. It, it hasn't mm. been that hard okay. to be honest with you. And I think that's just because I know who I am, mm-hmm. and and I know that I want to be with Christ, and no one can change that, especially if he's with me yeah okay so do you want to you know tell us the yeah, testimony, the testimony of how it is that you came to encounter christ yeah good luck editing <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna waffle. Uh, i guess i would say my journey started like, kind of recently but i guess it would have to go back two eight years ago when i like, first spoke to my friend who came to this church because i guess it was from that point that i was introduced to Christ, uh, you know, as, as well as growing up in a Catholic school. So from that point of, you know, eight years ago where I was growing up in a Catholic school, I studied ethics and philosophy. So during that period, I was more, I guess, on the spiritual side, more of a new ageist, um, exploring different ways, understanding more about energy, karma and, you know, good vibes. and Like crystal energy. rocks and everything. Exactly. Yeah. So after that... Um, as I, you know, was studying philosophy, I used to question a lot of things, you know, like the problem of evil and suffering. Why does it exist if God's here and, and things mm-hmm. like that? And that made me kind of distant from what, like following a set um, religion and things like that, just because you're kind of picking and choosing what's good when it's not being directed by anything particular. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. after that, I was just, doing my own thing. I think that's what a lot of people do nowadays. One thing I would say is that I always prayed to God. Um, day and night, I would always pray. Obviously, that comes a question of, like, who was I praying to if mm. I wasn't really following a, a, a mm. set belief or I didn't have a, a, a set of core foundations that was, like, driven by the Bible and things like that. So for me, it was... That's what I was doing for, for a long time, just following. And I had my friend at the church here. Um, we would literally debate on Snapchat, like I've got paragraphs of my friend just showing me the gospel, showing me scriptures of, you know, what the Bible would say and what God says in certain situations. And I would just debate with her and say, how does that make sense when mm. that you might do X, Y, Z? And we used to go back and forth and I wouldn't really, you know, go in, in one ear, out the other. And from that point, it was just not, I guess, me being divisive and dismissive as well. Um, just not wanting to accept or come to truth. So that was, you know, maybe four or five years ago. As I'm going to uni now, that's probably where things kind of started to take place a bit in terms of me getting close to God or mm. I guess be me being more open. So mm-hmm. when I was at uni, I thought it'd be a good idea to sell some drugs, you know. I oh. wanted to be a drug dealer. I wanted to just to make... So you were, like, aspiring to be a drug dealer? I guess I was just watching too much power. Ah, oh, oh, that wow. one. Interesting. That, that one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for real, did you, like... Was that, like, power no, you so wanted? No, so at uni, I think, you know, my mum's been very supportive. I didn't need uh, money. Mm, um, obviously, a um, mm. student loan, like... Yeah. There was money there, but for me, it was... It wasn't enough. It was, no, it was me wanting to make my own money ah, okay. and just being, like, reliant on myself to make the money. Um, and I knew like, people that could, you know, X, Y, Z. So I thought it would be a g- good idea to start something where I was, which was like, in Kent. So, yeah, I tried to be a drug dealer. God, God saw it and clamped me down and said, nope, oh, that's, wow. that's not for you. Yeah. So I was um, basically trying to be a drug dealer during the time where they were doing a lot of, um, they had an operation just to crack down in that specific area. Mm. And I had no knowledge of that. So during the time that I was doing drug deals, there was a lot of undercover police everywhere mm. and I wouldn't have noticed. But what they were doing was following the drug users and things like that. And just one day that I was doing it, 
one of them dropped um, money when I when they were going to give it to me as I was doing a transaction and then went to my car and then all of a sudden I'm walking away and I just hear I hear some police guys say stop and I start I tried to run <laughs> and I give credit to the police they were kind of fast and <laughs> they sweep me to the ground wow and then from there that was you know handcuffs going to custody going to jail um going to the police station first and I had to make that call to my mum and that was probably the worst phone call I've ever had to make in my life because yeah. that was like the disappointment that I have to, you know, I was crying my eyes out not because of where I was but my mum did everything that she could get me into uni, support me and there's me just mm. being selfish and thinking I want to make my own money so let me sell mm. drugs and I had to make a call to my mum to say I'm in jail and from that point I knew, you know, what I was in for, the consequences that were there. I didn't plead not guilty, I pleaded guilty, and I thought, let me just take whatever it is that I have to do. Um, and I would say they, they didn't give me a tough sentence. I could have been there for four years for what I was caught for, um, but instead it was two years. I only had to do one, and I got on um, HDC, which is TAG, so I was on house arrest. But mm. during that period, I was in jail for nine months and I switched to many different jails. So I think I was in overall three jails. I was in um, one called High Down, Elmsley, which is in Kent, and then Isis, which is in London. So I moved around quite a lot just within nine months as well. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of kind of restarting and things like that. But during that time, I thought it's the best kind of opportunity. Like I had no one. So mm. for me, I was praying as hard as I as I could wow. during those times. Um, I know we shouldn't idolize like artists. I like I don't like saying we have a favorite artist and stuff like that. But J Cole would have been like one of my favorite artists. And I've actually got a tattoo, one of his lines on my um, stomach, and it says, um, "Believe in God like the sun up in the sky. Science can tell us how, but can't tell us why." Mm. And I used to write that on like when I was in prison. I used to write that on the walls. Mm. And obviously, it might just be a line for some, but for me. It's a really significant meaning in terms of what you learn from the Bible because with science, it can break down like why things, like how things happen. Don't use that because I forgot. You need to. Yeah, no, it's okay. Science tells us how things happen, like, can give us like reasonings, the breakdowns, draw the diagrams, but mm. it can't really explain why. And I think why, and I think the, the question of a why is like a very emotional, it's a deeper meaning. And I don't think science can just explain that mm -mm -mm. it can show you like let's say within your human body like what neurons and how things like mm -hmm. serotonin levels increase and things like that and why it may make you feel a certain way but i feel like the the question of a why is it is too complex um to comprehend and i think when we look at the bible you can kind of get your answer from there um i never knew that whilst i was in jail but i feel like because i was praying so much in jail that there was something that you know god was there with me and you know he never leaves you during those mm -hmm. hardest times and even even though i wasn't christian or i didn't give my life he was hearing my prayers mm -hmm. and he heard my prayers when i was praying to not be away for so long i could call my mom i could call my flo close friends here and there but you know i wasn't um even when we had cell phones in the actual cells i didn't want to call anyone close to me because i thought I have to suffer the consequences of being, you know, I guess, in the situation that I was. So I think being in jail, I went to, I actually went to Bible study during jail. Wow. Um, it was Catholic classes, so I didn't really, because <laughs> I grew up in a Catholic school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I went to a Catholic Bible study, and I used, I always used to be the person to read the Bible. Mm. Uh, the guy used to say, yeah, you're reading, maybe because I spoke okay, but he used to tell me just to read the Bible all the time, and I think that helped me just to, understand more and more but I was so reliant on God during the time I was in jail and mm. I think having self-reliance on ourselves isn't the way forward it's to mm. rely on others so I kept praying to God because that's all I had mm. and I actually never felt so good like I know it sounds crazy whilst I was in jail in a small confined space I never felt so good like many people might find it suffocating and things like yeah. that but when I was praying to God I felt so free and I felt so good, my mind was clear that I was never worried. I was more worried about the people that are outside thinking about me 
thinking, you know, what's going on? Mm. Is he okay? Mm. When I was fine throughout the whole the whole journey. So once I got, you know, released, um, I was on tag, but I kind of forgot everything that happened in jail yeah. because mm. I, I wasn't a Christian. It's basically like I used God to help me through that situation. To get you out. And then I neglected him. Yeah. And I think that's something that I've always done. I always pray to God about certain things, but I always neglected him. And there's so much that, you know, happened after that. So being in jail was, was one thing, but then there's times when I'm working and everyone goes through it in life when you're working, working, and you kind of don't know where your life's heading. And then you're thinking, you know, what are you going to do? Am I good enough for, for this, good enough for that? And I hit that rock bottom point where I genuinely didn't know where my life was heading. I remember I got a really good job at a bank and I got handed a contract, but then it got withdrawn last minute because I had a criminal record. And yeah. that's something that I have to kind of remind myself of mm-hmm. even today that mm. if I apply to a job or whatever, it might not be the case that I, that I have it, but obviously through God, all things will be possible. Yeah. And I think whilst I was in that stage of, you know, neglecting God, when I went through that period of rock bottom, I was literally on my knees crying my eyes out, just asking God for help. And literally the next day, somebody messaged my mum and said they, that they want to speak to me. And this is somebody that was uh, a Christian Christian woman that said, you know, she knows me from, from a young child, but something in her picked up that, you know, this child needs some support and needs some help. And the next day, she literally messaged my mum and said, can I speak to your son? And she knew exactly what was going on. Wow. And it was very overwhelming, but I called on God mm. and he answered me and helped me straight away. There was no hesitancy mm. whilst he was helping me. And still I neglected God even when he helped me. So it's like, how many times am I gonna yeah. neglect him and just keep going and keep pushing and just um, pushing him to the side? I ended up getting a new job. Um, and then from there, that was kind of where I started to re-engage in my journey with Christ, obviously I have my friend at church who was guiding me and helping me when I had questions and always pointing to God. My main thing was secular music. Um, I couldn't let go of that because I love music so much that I was like, I could never kind of do that. And mm. I didn't realize the impact it had on me until like I was reciting lyrics until I felt kind of violent and aggressive. I used to be one of them people that said, it won't affect me because music goes to your subconscious when it's repeated. And I've, I used to think I'm mentally strong enough to not let it get mm, to me and I can mm. push it to the side until randomly I'll be thinking of lyrics that I just, mm. I can't say it, but they're just so violent that yeah. it's like, I can see um, mm. why the music's bad. But she, my friend showed me a playlist of gospel music. So I thought every day that I go to work, I'm going to try and just listen to gospel music, worship music. And I tried it for a month. So it was almost like I was doing a bit of a fast. Mm. And I never felt so good after that. My mind was like almost cleansed. I felt free. I felt just everything in my life was going right. And then again, I kind of just went back to listening to secular music, back to who I was and things like that. But I think my friend always suggested that I watch services and things like that. And I go back to my snapback, um, snapback, snapchats. I go back to my Snapchats on my phone flashbacks and I've got Bible studies there from a year ago. So mm. kind of reminds myself, I've been trying for a while, but just hasn't really connected with me. I used to read the Bible a lot, but it used to just be words, words going in and out of my ear. Mm. I never used to connect with it. And I think that was kind of my problem, not understanding it enough. And I think it's because I didn't give my life to Christ that I wasn't able to, I wasn't open to receiving it. So when I would read these words, they were literally just words and they weren't words of wisdom to me. And I went through something last year where I I went through um, like an accident as well. Um, Whilst I was driving, I was dropping my ex to the airport, um, dropped her off and I was, I did smoke weed. Mm. And it must have been like fumes inside of me. I was driving on the motorway and literally I was on a junction just joining a main road. Um, and my car, whilst I was driving it, spun facing the oncoming traffic. 
like just imagine like your car's just going in a straight direction, but all of a sudden it turns yeah. and does a 180 and you're, and you're seeing like lights come towards you. And on the motorway, there's like five lanes. So my car literally went from all the way to the left, all the way to the right, as if it was like drifting. Wow. And I, in, in that moment, it was like slow motion. <coughs> and I, and I, I was saying like, God, please help me yeah. in that moment. And I think a car just very slightly hit the front of my car to move it a bit. So I wasn't like, Face, face on. on, yeah. And then on the last lane, there was a van coming at full speed and it just <sighs> went, like, crashed straight into me. And, like, literally direct... For many people, that could have been a wrap. They could have walked out, broken bones, been in the hospital. I literally just got out of my car. Literally, like, nothing happened. Mm. I just got out of my car. No broken bones, no, like, rashes, no sore muscles. There was nothing like that. I literally just, just got out of my car. Like, like it was literally like a movie mm. just coming out and... After that, uh, the car was a write-off because it was that bad. I had to get a new car, but that for me, in that moment, because I prayed to God during that, just that one moment of slow, like that felt so slow, I, I couldn't really neglect him again. Mm. So I realised that I need to be a bit more consistent in praying to God, mm. um, trying to understand again who he was. I have a question and it might be a bit tough to answer. You may not want to answer it, which is fine. So um, not to call you out, but obviously you have a history of, of, of um, neglecting the Lord mm. when he gives you something and you run away. I'm sure there's also been moments where, and every Christian goes through this, so it's not even just an attack on you, but where, you know, sometimes you might fall back in a into a sin or you might fall back into your old ways. And because of your history of neglect, how do you now deal with that where you know that, okay, I've fallen back into something, but it's not going to be the same? Yeah, I feel triggered because that's very <laughs> relatable. No, I was literally um, telling somebody earlier today during a fellowship that like these past like June, month of June, I feel like it's been, it's been a bit tough because mm -mm. I felt like I've been on a honeymoon and I felt like that, kind of came to an end. Yeah. And I keep telling myself that I don't want to go back to the person that I once was, mm. like, in terms of the music and all these yeah. other things. And the thing is that when I was feeling low and I was feeling upset before, I would find comfort in certain music. Yeah. And I found that recently, that when I've been going through them tough times, that I've actually said to myself, I want to listen to, like, a song. There's an artist called Rod Wave. And whilst he doesn't, like, spread anything sort of negative he's just very relatable mm -hmm. but his words aren't from the words of god or they're not it's not wisdom from god so i keep reminding myself that i need to be encouraged and uplifted by words of god rather than just words of somebody that isn't on the same path so i can't lie it's tough because i'll be lying if i said i don't listen to secular music yeah during the past in the month of june i did listen to like because that's all i relied on was that music and I'm still new so I've been changing and trying to just switch to my other playlist which is worship of God and just going back to understanding that I need I need a lot of Jesus in my life mm -hmm. and I don't need a lot of what anybody else says because obviously it's from it's from human desires and I need yeah. something that isn't um, just human desire I need something that's of wisdom you mentioned something about the cross and stuff which I guess is the main part of Christianity so what does what does what Christ did on the cross mean to you? Well, I think every day it reminds me of whatever struggles I'm going through or what, like whatever, even if it's times of happiness, times of sadness, what mm. Jesus did for us, I need to remind myself of that every day because for me it's like what gives me the right to be unhappy when he went through a great deal of suffering to save us all and I remind myself of that to be selfless and to just lean upon God and use their moments to, to understand of how great he is and just when I'm sad that I have no reason to be because everything that I've been through, Jesus has always pulled through and helped me get right back up. So every day like I wear this cross, I don't wear it as a fashion statement. If I need to tuck it inside, that doesn't bother me, but it's more just to remind myself and to show others that I'm not afraid to express my faith and show people who I believe in. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Amir. Any, any questions? Thank you so much for that, Amir. That was definitely um, an inspirational story. And I think it definitely shows that, 
not everyone comes to Christ the same way, that even when he does call us, you know, some people might accept the calling straight away. Some people, it may take time. But I think something that you've definitely highlighted is that he is always there. And that's beautiful. Definitely. Amen. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Amir. Hey, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Share It. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to follow Amir on his Instagram called Won't He Do It. We appreciate all the likes and comments that you guys leave. It really helps us to um, build up the engagement and push the message forward that people need to hear. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.